I want to thank Pastor Aaron for allowing me a little time today uh, to speak a little bit in your lives. Starting off and ushering into a new year. A new year of ideas and hope of change is in the air of most of your minds, including myself. Uh, most of the changes that we experience uh, comes from the choices that God freely gives us to, to, make, to choose. If we want to change, we have to choose to live differently in order to see those benefits. I find this to be true in both the physical and the spiritual realm of our lives. So this morning I want to share a, a journey with you that some of you uh, may have seen and, and heard and seen me post about this past year um, that may help lift the burden uh, for you for just a moment uh, to help you absorb the power to make a change. So first off, I want to focus on the word choice. To simply put, choice comes when we are presented with one or more possibilities. So what changes are you contemplating today? Some of you might say uh, a New Year's favorite, I want to lose weight. I want to be a better parent. I want to grow in my relationship with God. I want to learn something new. Or I want to try something different. But if you're like me, I'm going to guess that this ain't your first rodeo. Uh, a lot of the things that you're facing are possibly things that you've faced before. So a lot of these things uh, are repeats of years past. Or remakes of choices you may have failed at last year or last week. Or maybe even this morning. So I'm sure the idea of change may be entering your minds with a nagging question. How will or how can this year be any different for me? So I want to present to you uh, three thoughts to consider as a part of this message. I want you to choose to commit. I want you to choose to embrace your challenges. And I want you to choose to accept coaching. So let's talk about the choice to commit. To show you a, a photo, who's that guy? In 2016, I topped out at 240 pounds. Now I knew a lot, a lot of guys that were a lot bigger than me and frankly, I was happy being a, a bigger guy until I realized I wasn't happy. It hit me one day as I struggled to bend over and tie my shoe and I noticed that I began to breathe pretty heavy. So at that moment and many other moments, I realized that this is not who I wanted to be. So at this particular moment in my life, my journey had just uh, started to begin uh, with the fitness. The fitness journey I've come to see, uh, there's a lot of similarities between the physical and the spiritual. And I feel like I've learned a lot in my physical journey uh, this past year that is making me a stronger Christian today. So the second photo, <laughs> the second photo, this is me when I started trusting in what I could do to get results. I talked to people and tried to incorporate what they told me, and I spent hours online looking up workouts and diets. Uh, but there were results I was wanting, I, I, I wasn't getting them. Or should I say I kind of got them, but I wasn't quite satisfied with those results. So I come to the conclusion, I had to go deeper. And that required a different level of commitment. A much deeper denial of myself. So let's look at the word commit. It's defined as a choice that restricts freedom of action. So let me say that again. It's defined as a choice that restricts freedom of action. 
So what does this mean? It simply means that as I commit myself to whatever plan or action I have at that time, I would have to deny the freedom of doing what I have always done and how I thought it should be done. So by committing to denying myself, I recognized that what I had previous done was keeping me from being the best me that I could be. So some of that was due to the, to the doctrine that I had. Uh, doc, doctrine just simply meaning is what I believe about what the Bible says. Uh, so for the longest time in my life, I felt like I was a failure. I felt like I couldn't meet up uh, with what God wanted me to be. Uh, his standard was more than I could bear. Yet a few weeks ago, uh, Aaron spoke on a message about uh, the parable of the sower and the seed. And this message really challenged me. This challenged one of the most polluted doctrines that I had in my head at the time. And it kept me from being who I wanted to be and who God wanted me to be both in the physical and the spiritual. So he spoke of the seed that fell on the soil, in the weeds, and on the rocks. And that it was not the end of that seed, but that that was only a stage of process in the growth of that seed. In my mind, I always took this as individual seeds. And that there, and so basically what I, I, I thought about it is, in those scenarios of the seeds, once you were planted there, that's where you were. Now I understand that the journey in our spiritual lives happens like every spring season is to farmers. I get multiple chances to get it right. When I get it right, I'll move on. If I get it wrong, then I get to try again. So an important lesson to remember is that life is not pass or fail. Life is about becoming more than you were before. Ultimately, for our purposes as Christians, that is becoming more like Christ. Other things that held me back was as simple as time and money, whether true or not. Uh, I quickly understood that there is always an excuse for me not to become the best man that I could be. I understand better now that commitment will always cost me something. There's a story of the Israelites where Moses stood in front of them and began to lay out the law God required for the people to follow. The people had to make a commitment, a denial of self, and adherence to the plan of God. In Exodus 19, the Bible says, After Moses went back, he reported to the leaders what the Lord had said, and they promised we will do everything the Lord has commanded. So Moses told the Lord about this. So I want you to focus on the idea of everything the Lord has commanded. Do you believe what the Bible says for your life? In my journey, we got more. Uh, I had to accept that there was a good plan for, for getting the results that I wanted. When I accepted that plan... I began a much more fruitful journey, which brought about the results that I desired to see. So I want you to think about the plan that God has for you. Are you following the plan? You'll know if you're seeing results. So I challenge you, it doesn't matter how much you're working for it. If you're trying to work a different plan other than what God has given to you, you won't be able to reach the results that he's promised. So let's talk about the challenges. So when you commit to growth, the devil's not going to make it easy. In fact, life doesn't make it easy. So I found three challenges that seem to always get in the way. Mental, <coughs> physical, <laughs> and I laugh about this one because... <laughs> Because Aaron told me that I had to use chuck words that people would understand. So I'm going to use appetital challenges. So you can't take that one. That is my word. <laughs> so the mental challenges were things like, I can't. I will only be average. You tried it before and you failed. Who do you think you are? This is selfish of you. Do you really think... God wants you to do this. 
Do you see a common thread? Fear. The physical challenges, my elbow hurts. My shoulder hurts. I'm tired. I have limitations. I'm old. Do you see a common thread? Doubt. The appetital challenges, I need cookies. I deserve them. I'm missing out. Do you see the common thread? It's entitlement. So one might ask, how did I overcome these challenges? I kept going, and I didn't quit. The Bible speaks of our need to take our thoughts captive and to bring them into obedience to Christ. That battle is both physical and spiritual. So in my life, I had to go back and remember what God did for me. If God did the things for me in the past, would he let me down now? He wouldn't. I had to take fear by the throat and determine that his voice would not direct me. I had to wrestle with doubt and gain the strength of the Holy Spirit to empower me. I had to realize that I'm entitled to nothing. I would fight every lie with the truth. Physically and spiritually, I have been destined to win. So I couldn't stop. I kept my eye on the prize. The writer of Hebrews challenged us to the same thing. In Hebrews 12, it says, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Him who endured such oppositions from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus said, in the world we have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I believe that Jesus intended us to overcome fear, doubt, and entitlement, both in the physical and in the spiritual. He has given us, us help in order to do it. So thirdly, let's talk about the coaching. So on my journey, I grew to understand that I needed help if I was going to succeed. I chose a guy who could challenge me through every sidetrack and turn. I can say I messed up often, but his reply was gentle and encouraging. He didn't slam me for my failure, and he led me to believe that I could do better. I eventually did. It's funny that even with all the mess-ups, that his plan never changed. Had I followed it in the beginning, I would have gotten the results so much faster. Yet the fact that I eventually sold out to his plan led me to the results I have gained and that you see standing before you today. Doesn't my coach sound a lot like the Holy Spirit? Let's consider the plan that I got from my coach was similar to the Word. If I followed my coach's plan, line upon line and precept upon precept, I saw change. If I trusted in his plan, which often had a specific timeline, I saw change. This man had a plan for me. He knew the means to get me there. He set the table and invited me to enjoy. I just had to choose to come. God has given us his word. He has given us the experience of others. And he has given us the Holy Spirit to empower and to lead us. His plan is good. If we trust his plan, we get results. He too invites you to the table to come and to enjoy. You just have to choose to come. So let's wrap, it, wrap this up. As I said earlier in this message, this journey physically and what I have learned has made me and is making me a stronger Christian. My takeaway from this journey is simply this. I don't need to sin. God's plan is better. I can trust His plan to bring results. 
deviating from God's plan will only hurt the results. And God will keep working on me until I get it right. But it's based upon me making the right choice. So this morning, I invite you to examine what you are choosing. This morning, I invite you to choose differently. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every individual here, Lord, who is praying and hoping for the changes in their lives. God, I thank you for the strength and the endurance that you've set in me, Lord, to do those things that you have called me to do, to start me on a journey, Lord, that I had no clue that you would utilize, not only in my life, but in other people's lives to help them on their journey as well. Father, I thank you for the help of your Holy Spirit within us, Lord, to give us the strength and the hope to continue, Lord, onto the promises that you have given us. Lord, that your word is, is like an anchor of our soul. Lord, when, we, when our minds go against what we know or what we believe or what we think or what we hear, God, that your word is that steady course. So we just thank you for the love and for the grace that you've given us each and every day, Lord. Not to fail. Not to quit. But, Lord, to endure. And to endure it with joy. So, Father, again, I thank you for each and every person here as they go about their, their new year. Father, I pray that you give them strength each and every day, Lord, that they may put their hope and rest in you. It's in Jesus' name I thank you. Amen.